Hello, my name is Barbara Smith, and I'd like to share with you what God has done for me and is doing in my life. I was raised by a Christian mother and attended a Baptist church most of my life. I was the oldest of four children, and my siblings were saved before me. I was saved in May of 1953 at a revival at Fountain Memorial Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. When a ma message from Mark 8:36, for what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul, was preached, and it spoke to my heart. It described my condition, and I asked the Lord to forgive me and to come into my heart and save me. I'd heard the gospel all my life, but God chose that message to show me where I was, a sinner who was lost. I married very young to an unsaved man and thus didn't attend church on a regular basis. Then our daughter Kathy came along and I started attending because I wanted her in church. She was three years old when I got saved. There was dissension in our home because my husband had never attended church on a regular basis and he would go with us sometime. At the time our son Joe was born, he was attending pretty regularly. And uh, I wanted to, us to dedicate Joe to the Lord publicly, but my husband refused. And I remember standing in my pastor's office crying. My pastor said I could dedicate him myself. And he prayed right there while I held my boy and dedicated his life to the Lord. I truly believe that even though I wasn't, not always a good mother and, and, te and teaching him, but I believe that this is the reason he's serving the Lord today. You see, and, I, and that he's in the ministry. You see, I've learned that God has always keeps his promises, even when we fail to keep ours. I went on to learn and grow and serve at Fount Memorial regularly until 1965 when we moved to Clinton and it was too far to go back into D.C. for church services on a regular basis. We usually went on Sunday morning, but since my husband didn't attend and Kathy and Joe were becoming teenagers, they didn't want to go either. So eventually I quit taking them and I became backslidden for eight years. Then a lovely Christian lady who was a neighbor started riding into D.C. with me and she would shared, uh, began talking about the Lord to me. And that's when I realized how much I missed uh, my fellowship with the Lord and being in church. So one Sunday night in November of 1973, uh, Lori and Sue, who is now my daughter-in-law, and I went to church with this neighbor and I rededicated my life. As a result, Lori got saved then Joe and Sue went to a Wednesday night service at Riverdale Baptist where my sister attended and worked on staff. And Joe was saved there. Sue had been saved earlier. About that time, my husband lost his job of 28 years as a window decorator. And we were going through a difficult time. He had a difficult time finding work and we were struggling to make ends meet. One night I was tossing and turning and worrying and wondering how we were going to pay our expenses. And all of a sudden, a scripture promise that I had memorized came to me. Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That never leave thee nor forsake me assured me. And I was able to go to sleep and later, God provided a way for us to meet our month's expenses. Two verses that have been a comfort to me are Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with my right hand of strengthen thee. I will help thee, and I will hold thee, with a hold thee, I'm sorry. And then Isaiah uh, 43, 2 says, 
when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flames kindle upon thee. Once I rededicated my life, I continued to be faithful to the church and started having daily devotions with Lori each morning. We continued this <clears throat> until she married and left home. 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. My earthly reward for faithfulness has <clears throat> been to see Lori and Joe in full-time service, plus a grandson also in full-time service. We joined Independent Baptist Church in September of 1978, and in July of 1979, I went on staff as financial secretary and church treasurer with Dr. Pat Creed. I worked in that position until June of 1987. My husband was not happy with me working there, and it was a point of dissension in our home. Uh, my husband was an alcoholic, but the good news is that Dr. Creed led him to the Lord, and he followed the Lord in baptism. However, he never surrendered his life completely and did not know the joy of his salvation. He was stricken with throat cancer in January of 1991 and had a laryngectomy, losing his ability to speak or swallow. As a result, he had to quit smoking and drinking. His personality changed, and we had three wonderful years. But, and we had three wonderful years together. In June 1990, he passed away in June of 1994. Before his death, I was able to go over the plan of salvation again with him, and he assured me that he was saved. I was, it was difficult to lose him after 46 years of marriage, but I know I'll be seeing him again. Uh, one morning, and I was right before uh, his passing, I was having my devotions, and uh, in my devotion there was Psalm 23, and the very first verse that says, The Lord is my shepherd, and it spoke to me so strongly that I knew God was going to take care of me, and I knew it was going to be all right, and I had a peace that passed all understanding, which the Bible talks about, that peace that passes all understanding. In 1995, I lost my mother, who had been living with me, and she had a stroke, and once again, I had to draw on the Lord's strength. Now I was living alone. In August of 1996, God sent Virginia Parrish to Independent Baptist Academy as a school teacher. She needed a place to live. She lived with me for six years and became like one of my children. She returned home in September of 2002 and I'm alone again. Now in December, my son Joe and his wife Sue came to live with me, so now I wasn't alone. In January of 2006, I put my house in Clinton up for sale. This was just about the time the real estate market was slowing down, so needless to say, I was afraid. I had my house in Hollywood built and needed to sell the Clinton house to pay for it. On January 14th, the Saturday before, the Clinton House was listed for sale. The Lord gave me this verse in my devotions, 1 Samuel 12, 16. Now there, now then, stand still and see this great thing the Lord is about to do before your eyes. The second family that looked at the house bought it. Once again, God showed me that he was watching over me. My daily studies have made may realize what Christ did for me, and today he is still watching over me and giving me strength to work where needed and to serve him. And my God grows sweeter to me as the days and years go by. And that's my story. Oh, that's so sweet. And to add to her story, today is her 89th birthday. Yay! So let's Thank all sing you. happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, dear mom. Happy birthday to you. We 
love Thank you. you. Thank you. Social distancing, <laughs> hug and kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I had, to, had a hard time to keep from crying. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you so much.